I started a live and the sound was really bad, so I'm thinking maybe my cell reception was bad. Uh, let me know how I sound now. Or if you can hear me. So do I sound better now? I want to welcome those of you just joining me. I started a live a few minutes ago and the sound quality was really bad. I'm assuming that uh, I was on, uh, my cell phone signal was bad, so we'll start over. I'll start from the beginning. But basically, I'm going to show you how in the next hour, how to take from a drawing like this to a completed pumpkin like this. I'll show you the basic tools I use, I'll give you some pointers on how to use them, along with uh, where you can buy them, what they're called, if you would like to you know, start sculpting pumpkins like this. One of the things that's really neat about this is a lot of people don't get to see 3D sculpted pumpkins up close. And there's a little bit of a learning curve with it, but to do something like this here, in the next hour, I'm going to show you how to do it. I did the exact same pumpkin on Instagram, Instagram last night. And I had, I don't know, six or seven, eight people, something like that, sent me a picture of their pumpkin that was completed. And most of them, were, it was their very first time. And they knocked them out. They did a great job. It, it was really a fun type of event. Uh, but I'll show you the tools and what you can do with them and how to, like I said, take it from paper to this. Uh, a little bit about myself, if you don't follow me on here, uh, shoot me a like, follow me. I am a professional pumpkin carver that is, I've been on Halloween Wars twice, I'm a champion on Halloween Wars, and I'm also the 2020 champion of Outrageous Pumpkins. Um, each year I do maybe 30, 40 of these of this style of, of jack-o'-lantern size. As the season goes on, I tend to do ones that are you know, a thousand pounds, 1200 pounds, 1300 pounds. If you look at this, or if you look at my uh, Instagram account, which is the same name, Danny Kissel 88, you'll be able to see some still shots of pumpkins we've created. I was part of a four man team in Pittsburgh two years ago that we carved a castle theme. I had a dragon that breathed smoke. Uh, last year, we had uh, four of us do, each one of us had around 2000 pound pumpkin. And we did a dinosaur theme that was 16 feet tall, 20 some feet wide. Uh, beautiful type setup. But the tools you want to use to do something like this, uh, try to hold them close so you can see them. This is made by Kemper. It's a ribbon tool, so you can see it's wider than it is, it's thinner there. As you run this through the pump pumpkin, it'll take like pieces of the, the pulp and the mushy stuff here away. 
and end with a nice clean design. Uh, you can get these at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, places like that. But whenever you uh, get them, you want to try and make sure you find ones that are the black material. That's a hardened material, so it'll last a lot longer for you. Uh, these are just bigger versions of the same thing. I customize mine and put little rake marks on them. It helps me gauge the softness of a pumpkin and really dig into it nice. But when you get them at the store, they're just uh, bare like this. I've changed mine to aluminum handles because of the abuse I put on put on them every year. But you'll like them. Uh, butterfly bit will do these eyes. A toothbrush to clean it up. Uh, exacto knife to make them nice and crisp. And this is a surform tool from drywall shaping that I'll peel the outside rind off. So. Let's get started. If you have any questions or comments along the way, I'll try to answer them and uh, see what they are. Now when I'm using this tool, the cutting surface on it, I have it set to pull down. If I push up, nothing happens, it just glides off the pumpkin. Like I said, I want to try and do more pumpkins like this on live so I can you know, show you how to create your own. Uh, if you're interested in that type, type, yeah, type of thing, I like to let an irregular shape around the outside just because I think it looks cooler. I'll put some marks there that don't really belong and aren't needed. I just think it adds to the overall uh, characteristics of the pumpkin. But these pumpkins were both, you can see, they were both picked pretty early. I tend to get mine right after Labor Day. Uh, so this green is where it was still growing. It really it was, wasn't done on the vine, but I pulled it off. But when you're looking for a pumpkin to carve, whether it be a pumpkin like this or a jack-o'-lantern, you want to try and find a big healthy stem like this. Uh, the green color still has nutrients in it, so it's going to feed the pumpkin even though it's off the vine. That way you'll be able to make it last a little bit longer. Now, this pumpkin here has been in the refrigerator for about a week. I carved it uh, the other day just as a sample piece, so I had a finished piece to show you while I was working. I wrapped it in cellophane, saran wrap, stuck it in the fridge, pulled it out here almost a week later. It looks perfect. So if you have a pumpkin event that you, you know, or a Halloween event or, you know, a pumpkin party or any of that kind of stuff going on at your house, then you can carve it a week or so ahead of time, wrap it in cellophane, stick it in the fridge, and it'll look perfect. Uh, it works on jack-o'-lanterns and this style. But I'm going to go in with the tool. And I'm going to sketch my basic drawing. I'm just going to sketch it really loosely on here. And when I drew this, I drew it this way on purpose. So you don't have to worry about the eyes being the same, the mouth is crooked, the, the pupils and iris doesn't have to be in the same location. It can even be moved all over the place. So I'll get in here and start carving. Hey, Peyton. So I'm just using the very corner of the tool. I'm using this part of the tool here, just this section. And all I'm doing is kind of sketching to get my location of where my eye is going to be. And I can change this since I'm not going that deep right now. I can go in and I can completely re-sculpt this really is what it boils down to. If I don't like the shape of an eye or if I don't like you know the size of it or if the pumpkin has a spot of rod in it, you can kind of dig that away and I can completely erase this and start over. But you can see there's just very fine lines on here. So I'll go by and add the mouth. And once again, I'm just kind of putting a rough shape in here. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. So 
So hopefully you can see that on camera. This pumpkin is really green, but once I start digging in, it'll turn into nice shady yellow like a typical pumpkin. I'll get some of this rind out of my way. Now if something happened you didn't like this eye, you can just take the tool and completely remove it and start drawing again. Then now it's back. So once I'm happy with these, this layout, I'm just going to, once again, I'm using just this point. I'm going to go straight in and I'm going to make these deeper now that I'm happy with how they're laid out. And it helps if you have your hand pressed against the pumpkin to be able to kind of guide it so you're kind of rotating and you're holding your finger here to kind of give you a pivot point to be able to really hold the pumpkin nice and steady and hold your tool steady. If you're trying to hold it like this and just out here, it's going to wobble all over the place. Sorry, my throat's getting a little dry. But so I can take these in there deeper now. Once again, my fingers are touching the pumpkin, kind of guiding it, holding the pumpkin still with my left hand. Uh, it works the same if you're left-handed. You just have to, you know, flip around the pumpkin a little more, work from this side, hold it this way. Uh, same setup, just left-handed. So now you can see my design starting to take shape. Now what I want to do is I'm going to switch over to the bigger tools. Same way with these. I'm just going to use the very corner of it. I'm not using the whole tool to kind of dig in here. Now you have to think about your eyes being round and this part being rounded into it. So if you see this pumpkin. You can see the eyes rounded in all directions. So what you want to do is use your tool at the side and you're actually using the flat spot now to be able to give that, that round look to your eye to give it kind of a realistic yet goofy face. And I'm only doing very light pressure. I'm only, the tool's just laying against it. It's not, I'm not pushing on it. I'm not digging away. I'm just kind of scratching at the surface. Now you'll see these little rib lines. They get, they kind of get in your design and get in the way. Pumpkins have a grain to them. If you think about them like wood, where the outside's harder and the inside is softer on this, the complete opposite of a tree. So you just have to go by at a different angle. And as you do that, you'll take those marks away and end up with a nice clean design. Now at the end, when I'm done, I'll take a scotch Bright pad to it and I'll really polish this to give it the same smooth look that this pumpkin has. So what I'm doing here is the groove that I made with this tool, I'm just following that with this one and it kind of guides it and holds it in to place almost like a, like I put something there on purpose, but it just gives you kind of the hard edge to be able to lay your tool against to give you a little bit more guide, almost like a guide rail on you know, a street. Especially in racing games when you're driving along and you want to go around the corner really fast and you just slam into the guardrail.
But after you do the one eye, you want to roll it from here in and this way in. So you have to make it nice and round. You can see the difference in these two shapes. This is the design I'm going for here is really soft and subtle. So it's not uh, like crisp edges. I'll add crisp edges at the end with a knife, but that's really just for the sharpness of having almost like a black line around it, like cartoon drawings have to really showcase that piece. But I'm going to slide the tool in, follow that groove, and just real lightly peel the edge off of it. Now you can see there's kind of a hard line around here. When I'm done, I'll fade this line out so that it gives a more of a subtle look to it. And then it's just a matter of you keep going back over the same areas and slowly push them back. This pumpkin right now is probably an inch, inch and a half thick. I could actually take this, uh, take my surform tool, peel the whole outside of it off, make it completely flat and start over. Uh, that's one of the nice things about finding pumpkins this size. So if you make a mistake, you just go back and basically erase it and start fresh. Now you can see as I'm um, getting through the surface, it's starting to get that yellow color that you're used to seeing. The more I dig in, the brighter the yellow will become. And the goal here is not to break in through the whole way. I'm really just staying on the, the top surface. Now the same way here, I'm going to go, I want the upper lip, this area, to stick out further. So I have to take this and push it back. So I'm going to concentrate on the underside of the lip. So you can start to see a shadow starting to form. This is getting pushed back. This is staying out. So I'm really not touching this surface a lot. I'm going to add him a little chin that I'm going to really make nice and soft here later. Or kind of a bottom lip or, you know, just something to give a little character. Same thing with some eyebrow lines. I'll, I'll pencil these in very lightly. Maybe a little something here. Now, it's starting to come together. I'm going to go back into these edges now, a little bit deeper with this here. Once again, using the point. But when I do it this time, I'm going to try and follow the contour of the eye into that groove. So that it's keeping the, the roundness showing up. And then I'll fade this line out again to make it nice and soft. But I'm going to keep following the contour of the eye. Same way over here. Once again, I'm pivoting my hand on there so I have some stability. Now you can see the eyes are really starting to pop. Now I'm gonna get rid of this green and this here. So I'm gonna push these back. Same thing as before, really light texture, light surface, just a little bit of pressure. You can hear that scratchy noise. It's just taking wee little pieces of the exterior of the the pulp, I'll call it, taking that off. And when you do your first pumpkin, it may or may not turn out. Most of the professionals, like myself, our pumpkins in the beginning didn't turn out very well at all. It was just a matter of watching more videos, kind of talking to some people, figuring out the ins and outs of how you want to make your pumpkin look and kind of your design. So it's really just a, a game of playing with it. But if you stay with something in a design like this that the eyes don't have to match, the mouth is crooked and goofy, it doesn't really matter how it turns out. Uh, you can just tell people, hey, that's how it's supposed to look. <laughs> but I'll use a paintbrush then too to go in and kind of dig at those lines, take that mushy part out. But now that I have the eyes nice and bright the way I want them, I'm going to start doing the same thing here, 
Now I'm dragging the tool this way and I'm letting this corner follow the groove that I'd already put in. So you can see it's making it kind of a smoother transition from the eye to the face. And for those of you that missed the beginning of the video when I was talking about the tools, uh, these tools, uh, I custom make mine because I do so many pumpkins a year. I need something that's really durable. durable. So I have an aluminum handle. Uh, but you can get these tools. You can get them at Hobby Lobby and Michael's uh, pottery stores. They are called clay ribbon tools. Uh, the small one here, if you're buying one of them, find one that's black. It has a hardened metal versus a soft aluminum metal. Uh, this is a stainless steel. So they're not going to rust when you're working on a pumpkin. They're not going to, you know, pull out very easy. They're not going to bend very easy. But you can get them. Even Amazon has them. Uh, they're not very expensive, but just Google clay ribbon tools. Now they make a clay loop tool as well for clay sculptors, but the loop doesn't do anything to the pumpkin. It just rides across the top of it and just skips along. So you need that edge to be able to dig into the pumpkin. Now, the edge of this, uh, it's not something that you can get hurt with. Uh, they're not very sharp. Some guys will sharpen them up like razors. Uh, it, if you do that, it tends to gouge the pumpkin. And I want it to skim the surface. So you can get these, give them to your kids, and they're not going to get hurt. Unless it's a brother and sister and they decide to chase each other through the house with them. But that's a whole different issue. But I'm just using light pressure and following that same line. Now I'm going to end up putting a darker line here in the middle to separate those two eyes. And then I'll go back the same way and just kind of feather that edge in. Anytime you're doing a seam area like this, you're just using the very corner or just into this piece a little bit. Most of the time you're going to work on a flat side, you're just going to use the big flat part. And you can get these in giant sizes. I have one that's a monster for working on the big thousand pound pumpkins. But there, his eyes are starting to come together. The little groove I put in, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use this piece and just kind of softly go along it. Give him just a hint of a brow line. If you want to see some of the finished pumpkins I've done, you can, I have some videos on my TikTok. I have a lot of stuff on my Instagram, uh, even my Facebook page. I'll go back with my surform tool here, take more of that green egg. What I'm doing here is that sharp line that's there, I'm just fading that out. It's going to kind of give his eyes kind of a, a bulge when I'm done. With a lot of practice on this, uh, this design you can do in eh, 30 or 40 minutes. Uh, but I'm not trying to rush anything, I'm just trying to show you the basics. But you can spend hours upon hours. Some of the more intricate designs I have, I can go into maybe 8, 10, 12 hours. Uh, the dinosaur theme that we did last year in Pittsburgh, four of us worked for four days, probably any, anywhere from 8 to 10 hours a day. So you can spend a lot of time on them. If you're going to do it outside, you have to kind of keep it out of the sun. The sunlight will dry it out and make it harder to carve and you end up it almost turns like a sawdust on the outside and starts peeling away 
So if you're doing that, you can get a spray bottle. Just mist it with water. And that'll rehydrate it. I'm going to go back into the mouth a little bit more. And you can peel that out. Now back to the bigger tool. Now I'm adding, the, you can really see the depth of this piece sticking over top of this. So once I get into it a little bit more, I'll be able to round it like this here. Kind of push that back, push these down, add this little soft chin, this little under eye area, make him look like he's kind of tired, kind of spaced out a little bit. Like most of us pumpkin carvers are, all pumpkin season. Go back and keep shaping the eyes. And you can really go over the pumpkin as many times as you want to. You can completely start over, start fresh. Worst come to worst, you spin it around, work on the back side of it. But right now I can go probably another inch back in this way before I hit the cavity. Where on the sides here, if you were doing a full sculpt and really doing a really cool looking skull or anything, any character you want to do or just an evil looking face or a clown or anything, the sides here are still the same as this. They're still around an inch, inch and a half thick. So you can take the sides of your pumpkin and really push it back to make everything stand out and give you a lot of depth to it. But for this little guy here, I just want to keep him right on the face of the pumpkin. Just make him happy that Halloween's here and we have Cool things like TikTok that you can watch people carve pumpkins and learn how to do it. I'm just using the corner of the tool to accentuate that line. I'm going to use the flat spot here to get rid of this green color. So I end up taking this lip back a little bit. I like some of that being in there, but uh, too much of it kind of distracts from the design. So I'll let those little hints of it there. You can kind of reshape the mouth a little bit if you want to. Kind of like he's biting his lip a little bit. I'm going to try and do more videos, like I said, uh, of different styles, different designs. Uh, I only have so much time in October because of the other events. But if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me a message. Uh, hit that follow button. You'll be able to stay tuned with what I'm doing. Uh, the big events, I can't uh, go live while I'm working on them just because the the time frame that we have to get them done. So, But you'll be able to see some cool videos and cool pictures of the end result. Like anything you do, the more you do it, the faster you get at it, the better you'll get at it. I started carving pumpkins around 12 years ago, I think. Uh, I had seen the challenge series on the Food Network called Outrageous Pumpkins. Uh, Ray Villafame was on there. Uh, my buddy Dean Murray was on there. Uh, a couple other people. But it aired on Halloween, so I didn't really get a chance to study what they were doing I thought oh, I'll give it a shot but the following year they came out with Halloween Wars so we DVR'd it and watched it as much as I could and learned what I could and tried to guess what the tools were because at the time there really wasn't a lot of knowledge out there for pumpkin carvers it was kind of new to the industry if you will so I try to 
do a little bit bigger designs, a little bit you know tougher designs every year to push myself, uh, just because of what I've seen other artists do and my friends do, and we all kind of tease each other and try to you know push it to another level. There you can see the yellow coming out now. But after I had seen Halloween Wars and Outrageous Pumpkins, it was four years later. Uh, I was invited to compete. Uh, first year I was on, I went home in a second round. Uh, we did a tree scene on a farm with a pig that I forgot to put ears on. Uh, on the first episode, the second episode we did, uh, it was Little Red Riding Hood in the forest. And it was too dark for the judges to really read, so we got sent home. Uh, two years later, three years later, something like that, they had a spinoff show called Halloween Wars Hayride of Horror. Uh, there was three pumpkin carvers per team, uh, two teams. You won six thousand or won $15,000 every episode. So there was three episodes, and we ended up winning two of them. So we were crowned the champions of the show. Uh, three, four, or five years later, something like that, uh, 2020, I was on Outrageous Pumpkins. Uh, which if, if you're tuned into Food Network now and watch it, I was actually the, uh, I think they called me a scenic artist on this year's episode. So I wasn't competing with the contestants. I was actually doing the background pumpkins. Uh, this week, Damaris has a, uh, a skull she's holding up with a spine hanging down off of it. Uh, it's pretty sweet looking. Uh, that was one of the pieces I made. Uh, you have to do a number of outrageous logo pumpkins. So they can set them on set. Uh, each week is a different theme. So I got to carve pumpkins for the different themes each challenge. So when you see a contestant, you know, they come out for the reveal and they spin it around. They're like, hey, I have to make a design based on gluttony. I did the gluttony pumpkin for them, which we didn't have gluttony, but we had things like that. I can't say what they are yet till the show actually airs. But when you do a show like that, uh, they take care of bringing you in, feeding you, putting you in a hotel, uh, so you can concentrate on just trying to make the best artwork you can make. Uh, really, when it comes down to it, you make a lot of friends in the industry that are, share the same likeness you do, and you both all turn into geeks and carry on and just laugh at each other, and it's one of the, the funnest parts of being on the show. It's, it's very stressful. It's long days. It's long hours. Uh, the year we did Outrageous Pumpkins, we filmed it in New York off of Long Island, the very northernmost part of Long Island. I think one day it was 15 degrees when we were carving pumpkins. Uh, another day it was 65. I got bee stung inside my ear. Uh, so you have to deal with those kind of elements on the show. Uh, bathroom breaks, you know, little things like that that you don't normally, you know, think about. Uh, you don't get anymore, so you got to kind of work really hard. And the whole time, there's a camera guy literally this far away from you, just like right here, you know, watching what you're doing, asking you questions, getting you to talk to the camera. Uh, that's one of the funniest things you, you do as an artist. You start really focusing on what you're working on. You quit talking to the people. And that doesn't make for good television, so they have to go in and talk to you and ask you questions as you're working to, to kind of poke you and prod you like, hey, hey, what's going on here so that you can make a good TV show. And at the end, whenever you're crowned the champion or you get sent home, uh, you're bummed, of course, if you get sent home. But the people that are there with you, the other contestants, usually just rally around you like, hey, man, you did great. And it was fun having you here. And it's you're part of the community kind of at that point. And everybody's sad to see you go. But at the same aspect, if you're the guy that's moving on and your good friend that you just made or somebody that you knew for a while gets sent home, then you have to uh, kind of get your game face on and move forward without being upset. Uh, will this shine through when it cut holes? Actually, if you put a, a bigger light, like an actual electric light, uh, I have LED ones to plug in, change colors. They will actually make this glow and the deeper areas will glow whiter than the outside areas. But those lights are big enough that the outside orange rind will actually glow as well. If you look through some other videos or go to my Instagram page, which is the same name, Danny Kissel 88 
You can see some of the pumpkins that we made glow like this. Uh, you can take, if you want to, when you sculpt it, I didn't go through to the inside at all. This is very deep and it looks black like I went inside, but there's still pumpkin there. So on putting a light inside this one, that pupil, which is normally black, would glow the brightest color. It would be a bright white. It's a really cool effect. But for these here, I just, I set them out on the porch. I take them to events. I just basically place them around. You can put a light here in front of it and broadcast up on it. And it kind of gives that look like you see in the movies or around campfires when somebody holds a flashlight under their face. Uh, it gives you kind of that silhouette look. But I want to do another video here at some point uh, doing jack-o'-lanterns to show you how I do jack-o'-lanterns and how I light them. There's a video I have pinned on TikTok that shows me going through what lights to use. Uh, but when I try to light them up, what I use is these lights here. They're LED pond lights. If I was doing a jack-o'-lantern, I would set this down inside of it. And you can change the color on this. It changes, I don't know, 30 colors or 40 colors or something like that. Uh, that works perfect on a jack-o'-lantern, but this will not light this pumpkin up at all. You have to have a, a big, powerful light. But what I like to do also, if I'm building a display out of these, I put some jack-o'-lanterns on both sides of it with just goofy faces and put this guy in the middle so the jack lanterns will light up. You put a light on the, the porch in front of it that shines up. This pumpkin lights up nice and yellow. The other pumpkins light up in the side and it gives you a depth that most of your neighbors don't have. You gotta brush that stuff off there, get it out of your way. Now one thing that helps too if you're new to this, if you put a bright light over top of it, I'll show you here, you can create more shadows. So it adds a more depth to your pumpkin. And this is just a battery light on a post one of my tripods but you can see if a light shining right at the face of it it gets kind of flat where if you put it over top it gets that hard shadow line and really gives it some depth I'm gonna round this mouth out a little bit more back in here and add this little bit of a chin that I had earlier when I was carving. Use the small tool to do that and then the bigger tool to remove the excess. Going for these lines, you can use the, the rounded tool. Makes it a little smoother for you. You can really get aggressive with them and remove a lot of material. But really, if you're doing this style pumpkin, you tend to go slower. Just so you're not digging away too much at a time. There you go, Mackenzie. This is the other one I have carved. So you can see, I did a very quick sketch and then just transferred those lines basically. You can get the tools at Hobby Lobby and Michaels and every pottery store that you can find has them. Uh, you can Google pottery stores online. Uh, Amazon has them as well. Uh, these brand, these ones here, are from Kemper. 
It's K-E-M-P-E-R. Whenever you get them, they don't have these little teeth in them. I put them in myself. So it gives me a little bit more control doing a pumpkin. It doesn't take as much of a bite at a time. It kind of chews through the pumpkin slower. Uh, this come from Home Depot, I think. Uh, it's a Surform tool. Surform shaver from Stanley Corporation. Uh, it has a rasp on this side for working on drywall. That's what I use to take the outside rind off. And like I said, I like to just kind of feather that out. I have it set so it only works when I pull down. Uh, you can flip this thing around the other way and it works while you push it up, but you don't have as much control. So when they actually come from the factory, you have to so I can pop this off here. Maybe I can pop it off. The new ones are tough. But you can separate that, clean your gunk out, and snap it back in place. That works great for taking the outside rind off. Uh, now if you're going to do a jack-o'-lantern, uh, I have different tools for that. Uh, I have saw blades and that kind of stuff. Uh, but I do go in with an X-Acto knife at the end and clean out the inside of the jack-o'-lantern to really give it a nice crisp line for the light to show through. Which I'll do another uh, video at some point here showing jack-o'-lanterns because that's what most people are interested in doing. Just trying to make their jack-o'-lantern cooler than the neighbor's jack-o'-lantern. Uh, but doing these, the smaller tools give you the detail. The larger tools remove more material. I have not done a Minecraft pumpkin yet. Uh, the little squares in Minecraft would be a little tough to pull off, but it can be done. I've seen people do them. I just haven't done one yet. But I know I keep saying it, but just very light pressure. I'm not. It's basically the weight of the tool that's riding on that surface. Now you just have to remember if you're doing this, you really have to make the eyes round. And you can see here they're kind of flat to each other. So I'll have to take this line in the middle and keep pushing it back. I'm going to do it some with this tool, but at the end I'll take a the exacto knife to it and really give a separation and it'll look like a coloring book line to give it really that depth. see uh, just soft little subtle movements. If I want to I can push this all back and that li whole line will disappear. I started my first pumpkin. Uh, the years all kind of blend together. I think it was around 2012. So right around uh, 11, 12 years now I've been doing this. Uh, I've been on Halloween Wars, I've been on Outrageous Pumpkins, I'm a Food Network Champion, uh, have a title belt that they gave me with Outrageous Pumpkins, uh, it's hanging on the wall here beside me. I have a room basically dedicated to carving pumpkins, so this is where I'm at most of this season. Uh, preserving a pumpkin. Uh, I get into that a little bit more when I talk about the jack-o'-lanterns, but uh, I have time here. We'll talk about it. Uh, people say rubbing Vaseline on them helps. Uh, what Vaseline would do is kind of hold the moisture in. But if uh, you hold the moisture in too much, it'll actually make the pumpkin start rotting from the inside out. Uh, these here pumpkins with the sculpted version versus the jack-o'-lantern version will actually last longer because there's less of this yellow surface area exposed. As soon as you cut a hole in it, you have all the inside, all those square inches of the yellow material, the, the pulpy material inside, uh, 
that's going to attract bugs, it's going to attract mold, moisture is going to get to it, it's going to dry out. So with this here, this is actually kind of a hard shell around it that will actually protect it. Now, if you have a, a Halloween party, you know, coming up in like a week or two and you're not going to have time to carve your jack-o'-lanterns for the Halloween party, you can carve them about two weeks. I, I t try to tell everybody around two weeks. You can sometimes do it longer. Uh, it depends on your setup. But I will wrap them when I'm done in clear cellophane. Uh, just saran wrap, whatever brand you have. I'll wrap the whole thing, the entire pumpkin, the stem, the base. So it simulates this outside rind to it. I did a Michael Myers pumpkin that was in the fridge for 26 days or something like that. There's a video pinned on my TikTok that you can watch that shows... Uh, a time lapse of me doing it. Uh, this one here takes about an hour. The the Michael Myers pumpkin, I think I had seven or eight hours in it uh, till it was done, so it was a, a time lapse video. But once I was done, I put it in the refrigerator, wrapped it in plastic, and wanted to see how long it would actually last. And it actually looked cooler after 26 days than it did when it went in, because if you're a fan of the Michael Myers and the Halloween series, it's the white face. The yellow part of the rind actually kind of dehydrated and became a white. So it actually looked cooler to me afterwards. And then there's occasionally you'll get a pumpkin that you carve a jack-o'-lantern and it starts to rot and fall in on itself that actually looks cooler than the way you made it just by natural stuff having to it. Uh, if you're not worried about the squirrels and the animals around your pumpkins, you can spray a uh, uh, kitchen cleanup, I think it's called. It's a water with a Clorox mixture. Uh, you can just spray all the surfaces lightly with it. Make sure you get the stem, the blossom at the end, uh, the blossom part and the stem end. Make sure you spray them as well. Uh, if you don't want to use the Clorox, which a lot of people don't, you can actually take this. If it starts to dehydrate on your porch and you see it starting to turn white and starting to wilt, you can actually soak it in a bucket of water overnight or a small trash can or whatever you can do to just get moisture into it. You can stick it in the kitchen sink, uh, anything like that for the moisture to pull back into here. It won't do anything to this part at all. It won't do anything to the stem. It'll just pull through the yellow material. And that'll give you, if you do that every day, you, if you really commit to taking it off the porch, putting it in the water, taking it back out, sticking it back on the porch again, you can really make them last. Now, when I do jack-o'-lanterns, I tell everybody to cut the bottom of them off. If you cut the stem off, there's still nutrients in this stem. Slide it back so you can see it better. It's really nice and green and healthy. If you cut the top off, that kills that line of nutrients from here to here. So even if you're doing this style pumpkin, when I go to the store and try to get them, or if I go to a local farm and get them, I try to find as much of the stem as possible. And I try to also find a stem that's kind of cool looking. It's like if you look at this one here. Let me slide this back so you can see it better. It has that cool little sweep to it. And that's why I chose this side to put the face on. If I did it from this side, you would just see the straight stem. So the stem has a lot of character to it too. But that's really all you can do for preserving it. Uh, lots of photos when you're done. Uh, the ones I take, the, the ones I have seven, eight, nine hours in, maybe a couple days in, uh, I may take 150 photos of it to find that photo that I'm really, really happy with. And that's you know where the time comes into it. I may have carved it for seven hours, but took another three hours to try to get that perfect photo. And lighting plays a big part in it. Uh, if you have lights blasting straight at the face of it, it's going to wash all this out and it's going to turn just yellow. It just, it'll just be flat. If you have a nice shadow coming down, it'll create these lines in here and make it seem like it's deeper than it really is. But like I keep saying, if you want to check out uh, some of the pictures and see some of the other ones I've created, uh, you can go to my Instagram or my Facebook or uh, I have some videos of the pumpkins up close. I just loaded one here the other day of a pumpkin I carved last year in the rain. Uh, it was a 
little scarecrow that had found a little butterfly and I, I took this part of the pumpkin, cut it off and made it look like an umbrella, put it on a stick, put it in his hand and looked like he was protecting the little guy from the rain. Add little characters there in his cheeks. Well, thank you. I appreciate the comments. And all the kind words I keep saying. <laughs> it's fun to do. I, I enjoy carving the pumpkins. Uh, I enjoy going to the events. Uh, really, when it comes down to it, uh, the guests that come and talk to me every time I go to a show, uh, they're the best part. Uh, meeting new people, showing people you know what can be done with a pumpkin uh, is really the coolest thing. And with a couple tools, and that's why I, I chose this style of pumpkin, with a couple tools, you can really make them come to life. I did the same setup yesterday on Instagram just to, you know, see how it was working on there and show people it on, that follow me on there as well. Uh, there was, I don't know, half a dozen people that made the pumpkin and followed along. And the very first pumpkin turned out very well for the very first time. Uh, the very first pumpkin I did back in 2011, 12, whenever it was, uh, was not cool looking. But it gave me the basics of what I needed to do to make it better. You're right, a green Frankenstein would look cool with this face. Uh, the tools are Kemper tools. Uh, these I made myself because I, I do a couple thousand pounds of pumpkin every year. The tools have to be a little bit more durable than you buy in a store. But the, get up close, they're clay ribbon tools is what you're looking for. You can see they're skinny and wide for the ribbon shape. That's how they get their name. I've added teeth to these to make them attack the surface a little bit softer. Sometimes when you're digging at it, uh, it'll make ripples. Uh, this here takes less material off at a time. So you end up getting a little smoother transition. Uh, you can see up close here, you can see the, the marks that are on it. That's created by the rake side. And then I can smooth them out just real lightly. All I'm using is the pressure of the tool. I'm not pushing on it at all. Just the weight of it is digging in there. And then when I'm done, I will take a scotch brake pad to it and really sand it nice and smooth. Uh, some of the tools you get at Michael's when you get a kit, they'll come with a tool like this as well. Uh, I had trouble with this tool when I started because of this round curve. As I pulled, it tended to drift this way or this way, and I struggled uh, really hard to try to get it to work. So I ended up finding these square shapes like this work better for me because I can pull it straight down. It stays exactly where I want it to. Uh, you use the corners to get in here and dig in. Uh, smaller ones do the more detailed areas. And at the end, when I'm done, I'll take an X-Acto knife up in here at this angle and this angle and kind of cut a triangular shaped wedge out of it. So it'll end up with that nice hard line that is on this pumpkin. So it'll add this little texture here, that little dark area that gives you that coloring book cartoon style face and it really gives you that crisp line. So if I was doing like Frankenstein in the green color, it would actually, as I go deeper, those areas would be yellow and it would have the green on the outside and it would really give you a, a different depth of looking at it. And then you'd have these nice crisp lines and it would give you almost a third element other than just the yellow and the orange. I, to put the teeth on the tool, I used a Dremel tool with a cutting disc. Uh, I forget the gauge and the thickness, but it's brown, has a bunch of stones glued together basically. Uh, I held this in a vise and just real slowly hit it to put the teeth in it. Uh, you can see they all kind of run a certain angle. Try to get the focus. There it is. You can see how I held it to get the teeth in. And you don't have to have the teeth. Uh, they help. And the more you do it, the, the more you'll see how it helps. Uh, but you don't have to. You can use these tools for the first eight years I did pumpkins. I never put the rake marks on them. I never put the, the teeth. I did it without. 
But one of the things I like to show people is if you get these for kids, you can literally, you can't get hurt with them. You can hit that all day long and it's not going to do anything. It gets a little sharper with the teeth, but once again, it's not that bad. So you could just kind of get the pumpkin and give it to your kid and let them go wild. But everybody's first mistake that they try to do is they try to make this entire cut in one piece. Everybody thinks like a jack-o'-lantern where you just take a chunk out. Uh, this here, you're just kind of shaving the surface of it. Just real lightly, nice and soft. You can see it makes a little bit of scratchy noise. You can go real soft like this and just kind of scratch that surface to add that line back in. Or you can go in here and use the smaller tool, add that line deeper, and then use this tool just to fade that line out. The more roundest roundness you have to it, the less highlights that'll grab from shadows and everything. Like this area here will pick up light more and this shadow will disappear to give you that smoother contour to really make the eyes pop. If you want to see more videos, I have, I don't have any how to's, but I have one video that shows you uh, jack-o'-lanterns and the lights I use. Uh, you can actually put, uh, I have a JBL uh, Bluetooth speaker that has lights that dance on it. I actually stuck that inside a jack-o'-lantern. Uh, it's expensive, so you don't want to set it on your porch. Some kid will come by and steal it. But you can play music and it dances with the music, changes colors. Uh, the lights that I use on the lights that I use on jack o' lanterns are these pond lights. They're waterproof. They're LED. Uh, they twist apart. Throw some batteries in them. And then they come with a remote that you can change it to any color you want to. Uh, some of them are forty or fifty colors. I think this is thirty colors or something. It makes. It will not light this pumpkin up, but it lights a jack-o'-lantern pumpkin up great. So if you watch my video, it's pinned at the top of my TikTok page. If you watch it, you'll be able to see what I mean. Uh, people use the little tea lights. They don't light up anything. I don't, I don't care what people say. Everybody talks about how great a tea light is. Uh, you're not going to get the, the brightness of seeing it from the street from a little tea light. But you can really whittle away with these pumpkins uh, as long as you want to. You can really uh, spend some time on them. Early in the season, early September, uh, usually all of us that do this professionally will go down and work on them, try to get the bugs out, uh, get our arms loosened up for a long season. By the end of a season, doing this every day for... Eight to ten hours, uh, your arms hurt, your shoulders hurt, you're tired, wore out, <laughs> but still cool and fun. The name of the light is, it's an LED submersible pond light. Uh, that's the easiest thing to look up on Amazon. You get uh, four of them in a pack, uh, kind of standard. Uh, you'll see people in the summertime using them inside the swimming pools to light up, you know, little kiddie pools. Uh, I think Walmart sells them in the home section, uh, like one light at a piece, but they're like 12 or $13 for a single light. Where if you go on Amazon, you can get a four pack of them for like 12 $13, maybe 15 bucks. I'm going to do a, a live video here at some point. Uh, I don't know when. I'll probably just jump on someday. So hit that follow button so you, you get a notification that I'm live. Uh, I'm going to show you the different lights I use and the different ways of lighting them up. You can even, with a jack-o'-lantern, you can actually cut a hole up here in the backside, like make a bat symbol. 
when you set it down, you put the light inside of it, it'll broadcast that bat symbol up on the wall behind it if it's setting close enough to the wall. The other thing I tell everybody with jack-o'-lanterns is if you cut the stem of it off, you lose all that nutrients. So you cut the bottom of it off, just zip a hole in the bottom of it, set the light down, set the pumpkin on top of it. This stays in there. It stays everything, you know, it looks more professional. Uh, you don't have to worry about the lid falling inside if you don't cut it just right or trying to line the teeth back up that you cut. So you can just end up with a, a lot cleaner looking pumpkin. Now, if you put a candle in it, you will have to take a top off because that heat has to escape. Uh, once a pumpkin dries out, it can actually get dry enough that it'll start to burn. Uh, you don't want that happening. So I tend to just go with the battery lights all the time. Uh, it looks cool too if you can set them on color changing. Uh, it'll fade from red to purple to blue. Or you can just have a couple pumpkins setting together. If you have like three or four jack-o'-lanterns setting in a row, you can make them all different colors. Uh, that's really cool. And that's something that'll set your pumpkin off of, you know, different than everybody else's. Give that little bit of a wow, wow factor. But you can see, let's see if you can see it in the camera there. It's starting to get almost like speed bumps from me digging on it. There's a grain within a pumpkin that you don't really know about until you start to do this. So if you do have that happen, just real lightly go the other direction. And if you're worried about how deep you're going, if you don't want to break into the inside of the pumpkin, you can just push some pressure on there. You might be able to see a little bit that's flexing a wee little bit. That means this pumpkin's still really solid up here. Uh, this is a new variety to me. Uh, my local farmer planted a uh, different uh, variety of pumpkins this year. Uh, same characteristics as my other ones I've worked with in the past. Uh, but he tries to find ones that last longer. Sometimes pumpkins like this, uh, they have so much moisture in them, they tend to rot faster. So he tries to find that happy medium of what's going to give longevity to the pumpkin. I try to find one that's really heavy for its size so I can do the sculpting work to it. Now, a pumpkin like this here, uh, this face, and I'll show you the finished one for those of you just joining. This pumpkin here took around an hour. Uh, that was just me sitting there goofing around. I went from a quick sketch. I had a minute or two in a sketch. Just laid the eyes out where I wanted them, laid the mouth out, and then followed those lines on here with the small tool. And then worked my way up to the bigger tools. Uh, but one of the things when I teach people to do this is I made these eyes different sized on purpose. Uh, if you're doing your pumpkin and you're trying to make them mirror each other, it's very difficult to do. The little bit of a shadow might change the shape of that eye and you get upset and you decide, hey, this is it, I'm not doing it anymore. So if you make these crooked on purpose and you put the, the iris here, you put it, you know, different locations too, it tends to add to that goofy looking smile that he has going on. Where... If you try to make these symmetrical and make everything balanced, uh, you got to get out lines and tools and try to keep that uh, shape and keep everything nice and tight. With this kind of comical design, you don't have to have that. So you can just kind of roll with it however you want to. If the line come up here a little bit for the mouth, you just work with it that way. In the beginning, when you're first sculpting it, you can kind of erase that with the this surform tool. Uh, it's for drywalling. You can just peel the edges off. And reshape your pumpkin if you have to. And then back to the Kemper clay ribbon tools. And then, like I said, an exacto knife at the very end to make those lines nice. Here's a close up of the tools for those of you just joining. Kemper is the company I use most of. Uh, like I keep saying, these are ones I made because they need to be a little bit more durable. So they have the aluminum handles versus the wood handles that you get with the store. Uh, if you go to Michael's, you'll get kind of a double-ended tool that has these ends on opposite sides of the tool. And you'll get one kind of shaped like this. But this in here, like I said before, I have trouble with because as you're using it, this curve tends to make it pull this way or this way. 
So I work back better using a straight tool like this. But they also have them at uh, pottery stores. Uh, Amazon has them. Uh, sorry, Kemper. K-E-M-P-E-R. Uh, what do you spray on a pumpkin before carving it? Uh, the only thing you have to worry about on a pumpkin before carving it is the stem and the blossom. The only thing you can really do to them, uh, and some people will get upset, but if you spray a Clorox solution on it, uh, there's a stuff that I get at Walmart that's called Kitchen Cleanup, I think, something like that. It's water with just a little bit of bleach in it to kill bacteria. Uh, this section here, which is the blossom end, when you see a pumpkin on the vine, this is where the flower first developed to be able to grow that pumpkin. And then the stem end, this section here isn't as important as this, but you want to spray that with the Clorox as well. But like I said, if you're worried about uh, the critters in your neighborhood, uh, you know, coming over and eating the pumpkins, uh, don't use the Clorox. Uh, you can actually, in the very early stages, if you want to, you can get a clear can of spray paint uh, and seal this in. Now, you, you run the risk of, if you do that, it may create a moisture trap inside and the stem will start to rot and then that'll just carry down to the pumpkin. So it's kind of a, a hit or miss for that. Uh, but keeping them, if you have them on your porch, Keeping them in the shade is the best thing for a pumpkin. Uh, cooler temperatures are great for a pumpkin. Uh, freezing temperatures will kill it overnight. These, if you think about it, are almost like a sponge material. And if it, it gets frozen, those little pores and all the water in here will expand. And then it'll look great. Uh, but you take it out and a day later it just falls in on itself and it wilts because all those pores have expanded and everything that's connecting them together the way they grew breaks apart so you end up with a bunch of mush that just falls to the ground. Uh, Tabasco sauce and uh, chili pepper and that kind of stuff keeps bugs away from it but really when it comes down to it the bugs don't do anything to it it's the moisture getting trapped or the moisture leaving is what kills the pumpkin the fastest. So when you're doing a jack-o'-lantern uh, you got to think about this orange rind on the outside is protecting it, but as soon as you cut a hole in it and you go into the inside, if you're thinking of it as square inches of a pumpkin, the inside now probably quadrupled the amount of surface area this yellow part is to draw in bugs and moisture. Can I say hi to Liam and Jude? Hey Liam and Jude, how are you guys doing? And you can see I'm just barely taking pieces of this pumpkin off. I have an event this weekend. I'm still trying to come up with a concept and an idea. I was going to do uh, a bunch of comical looking mice and rats in a bigger pumpkin, maybe a 200, 250 pound pumpkin, uh, to make it look like they were mining the seeds out of it. But I'm afraid that uh, guests won't be able to see it that well because we'll have to get up so close to see it. So, I, uh, I might come up with a different design for that, or I might try to still do it. I just thought it'd be cool to look inside the pumpkin and see, you know, everything that's going on. <laughs> yeah, my fingertips are rough looking. The beginning of the season, which I have a little bit of epoxy on here too, so it's not all that. But the beginning of the season, your fingers kind of get a little calloused and broken in and ready for the rest of the, the month long of doing this event. Uh, I said earlier in the video, last year I was part of a four-person four team in Pittsburgh and we carved a, uh, it was about 14 feet tall, 20 feet wide, I think, uh, display of dinosaurs that there was a T-Rex in the center that I was responsible for, and then each one of us did basically a 2,000-pound pumpkin. Uh, so if you go onto my Instagram, which is my same name, the same name is here, uh, Danny Kissel 88 
Uh, you can see the full display and you can see us standing beside it. Uh, we tend to do, we tend to get groups together and do the really big designs and the really big pumpkins. Now, I'm going to take a knife to it here and kind of cut that edge just to show you what the difference is between the tooling edge and the knife edge. Now when I'm using the knife, I'm using the same contour of this eye and then going straight in here to take out that triangle shaped wedge. And you may have to cut back and forth and then pick it away, but you can see that adds a lot tighter line to it and it'll give you this effect here. It'll give you this nice hard shadow. Like I said, like a cartoon or a comic book. Am I a Swifty? I'm not sure what you mean. Unless you mean a left and a right person, I can use both hands, yes. Uh, I'm okay with this hand. I'm not as good as I am, obviously, with right hand, but I'm not sure if that's what you mean. Uh, Garfield, no, it's just a comical looking pumpkin. Uh, it does have kind of a Garfield shape because Garfield's eyes protrude out and everything else is pushed back. And he has that little... <laughs> no, I'm not really a Taylor Swift fan. I, I like a couple of her songs, uh, but most of the stuff I listen to is on the harder side. But I do like a couple of her songs, so I'm not going to you know, diss her completely. Yeah, I try to give good answers. <laughs> but if you hit that follow button, you'll be able to see uh, more videos of the final pieces that we make when we go to the events. Uh, I'll be part of a four-person team in Holland, Michigan, uh, two weeks from now. We're doing a display with, I think we have 4,000-pound pumpkins in the display. Uh, I'm not going to give away what it is yet. You have to, you know... Tune in and see, or you know, check me out on here. I don't do a lot of videos. Uh, it's something I want to start getting into a little bit more. Uh, usually, I just don't have the time to, to dedicate to this. I should be working on my pumpkins for this weekend to get ready for my event, but I wanted to make sure since now is the time when everybody's going out to uh, get their pumpkins. I want to try and do this so you can you know, help pick out the perfect pumpkin for your house. Now you can see right there, it poked a little hole in it. Uh, if you go by at a different angle and go real light, you can make it look like that hole was never there. Yeah, I got into this seeing uh, people do it on TV and thought I'd give it a shot. And uh, 11, 12 years later, I got a championship belt. Uh, Food Network gave me $30,000 so far or something like that. Uh, when I won Outrageous Pumpkins, I got $25,000 for carving pumpkins, if you can believe that. Uh, I never would have thought that that's what I'd be doing or where I'd be at. But it was one of the things that I live in Amish country, uh, so pumpkins are cheap. I think a pumpkin like this costs about $3 or something, so you can buy them. And uh, play with them pretty cheap. Uh, I am from Pennsylvania. Uh, South Central Pennsylvania, below Harrisburg. And is it spooky stuff? Uh, yes, I have done Halloween Wars twice, and I've done Outrageous Pumpkins. Uh, I'm a champion of Halloween Wars and a champion of Outrageous Pumpkins. Uh, I was a Season 1 champion. There's the title belt I got. Can you see me? Hey, what's up? If you go on to uh, HBO Max Discovery right now, I think they have all the episodes 
Uh, you can go back and watch. I am Season 1 Champion from 2020. Ooh, Lancaster. Uh, the people here from Lancaster, I will be in Milton uh, tomorrow, or this Saturday, I'm sorry. And I will be in West Reading, which is a lot closer to you. Uh, the piece at West Reading that I do every year is for the West Reading Tavern on Main Street. Uh, two years ago, I made a clown in a uh, bumper car with blood and guts and stuff all over it. Uh, it was a thousand pound pumpkin and then the clown was probably another three or four hundred pounds. Uh, last year I did a tribute to the Return of the Living Dead. So I did uh, the main characters from it. Uh, well, the main character. Uh, I did him with his leather jacket. Uh, had lights and stuff on it. Made it kind of green like the swamp end, like the swamp in the end of it. Uh, Hey, thanks for the hearts and gifts. Uh, a couple years ago, I made a skeleton that was kind of a pirate, had a pirate leg, and it had an endless drinking system. So we put some colored water in the bottom of the big pumpkin to make it look like kind of like a green ale. And he had a hand curled up, and it was just dumping on himself. I couldn't get the angle exactly right to make it look like he was drinking, so we just said he was too drunk to drink anymore, and he was dumping on himself. Uh, so yeah, if you're in the West Reading, Lancaster area, uh, I definitely recommend coming over. Uh, it takes me about a week to get ready for that event. I have maybe 20 hours of carving time, maybe more, to do pre-carved pieces to put on the big display. If you go onto my Instagram, you can see the pictures of it. Uh, it's always a, a fun event because they let me do what I want. Uh, I enjoy doing kid friendly, uh, but I'm a horror movie fan, so I like doing creepy pumpkins as well. But here, I'll show you how I put the eyes in now. This is a butterfly bit or a spade bit. Uh, different areas call them different things. But it will create, at one time, it will create the iris and the pupil by putting it in and turning and just a little bit of pressure. You can use a battery drill if you want to, but when it comes down to it, if you're going to have kids doing this, uh, this is sharp, but they're going to get hurt less with this than they will with a battery drill. Uh, let's move it down a little bit. So I'm just going to twist this and push as I twist, and then I'm going to get kind of close and just kind of work it back and forth. And that'll break those fibers, and you end up with an eyeball. It's the perfect, easy way to, to put an eyeball in. Now, the depth that I go, I'll do this one deeper to show you what it looks like. Uh, it gets darker the further it goes in. I'll put this one a little higher. They don't have to match. So you can see how this one's darker than this one. That's because it's deeper in the pumpkin than that one is. But now, I'm pretty much done with these tools. I'm going to use the X-Acto knife to really showcase these lines and really make them step out. And you'll see the pumpkin looks completely different. I'm just going to follow that same contour, make a cut this way, and then make a cut straight down in this way. So it creates a V like that, and they meet up in the middle. And you can see I keep my other fingers on the pumpkin to be able to guide my knife. So I'm not just willy-nilly trying to hold the knife. It gives me a little bit more control. And you got to pick those pieces out. You may have to go over it again. Sometimes it almost creates like a suction.
Now if you use a toothbrush, just like brushing your teeth, it'll get in them nooks and crannies and give you that really nice line. And you can see how much better this looks than this looks already. Now you don't have to do this. Uh, if you want to stay kid friendly and make it, you know, where nobody's going to get hurt, you don't have to do this part at all. It'll still look cool. This just takes it that one step further to really set those lines off. The same way I'm going to separate these eyes, but I'm going less at an angle. Then I'll come back and peel that off a little bit more. Just to keep the eye round. You can always use a paintbrush. Just standard paintbrush. I like these little short stubby ones because they're easy to maneuver. Uh, are these real or foam pumpkins? These are real pumpkins. You can do the same thing with foam. Uh, you have to use a little bit different tools. Something more abrasive than your typical clay ribbon tools. Of course, the foam pumpkin lasts longer. Uh, but I don't actually do a lot of foam pumpkins. I don't like the mess really when it comes down to it. This here I can sweep up and it's gone. The foam pumpkin seems, seems like it's round forever. I do a couple here and there, uh, but most of the time I stick to the real side. I have a lot of friends that do uh, kind of an etching style pumpkin on foam ones and they have them displayed in the room forever and looks amazing. But I kind of like the idea of when I'm done with this pumpkin, it's gonna the clock's ticking, it's gonna start rotting and fall apart. Sometimes when you're done with your design, it'll actually look a little cooler when it starts to rot. Kind of give it more of a creepy vibe. Hey, thanks for all the follows I'm getting, all the likes. I appreciate that. If you have any questions after I'm done with this, uh, feel free to shoot me a message or a comment on one of my pictures and you know, fire away with anything you have. I'll try to answer any questions I can. Uh, this is my busy season, so it may take me a little bit, uh, depending on when you, you know, message me. Um, but if you get a chance to come to one of my local events, uh, local to your area, uh, I recommend it so you can get in and really see up close some of the Halloween Wars and Outrageous Pumpkin styles. Uh, this is cool. I enjoy doing this. But when you see a thousand pound pumpkin that's really sculpted, uh, it'll blow you away. You're, most people come up and they're in awe of what happened to the pumpkin. Or they'll go get dinner and they'll come back. And when they come back, it looks completely different. <laughs> yes, I'm basically a child. Uh, <laughs> somebody said that it reminds them of their childhood. Uh, yeah, I just refuse to grow up. I have two kids of our own. Uh, they're both grown adults now. Uh, but they carved pumpkins with me as kids. That was always a good time down here in my room. I'm one of the few people that actually has a room dedicated to artwork. Uh, it's called my man cave. It has a television and a PlayStation too. So, you know, got to have all the, the good pieces too. But this time of year, this is where I'm at most of the times. Down here carving pumpkins or designing pumpkins or working on tools for people. As I do make uh, tools uh, for people. Uh, they're geared more towards uh, guys like me that do this for a living or ladies do like it like this for a living uh, The tools you get in the stores are, are great. They work good But if you're gonna do a lot of pumpkin it tends to uh, They tend to deteriorate pretty fast the, the wood 
gets soggy on the tool and then your handle starts pulling out and you end up uh, during an event you end up breaking it then you gotta go into panic mode to try to fix it uh, I'm located in Pennsylvania just below Harrisburg and a pumpkin like this uh, on a porch setting will last a few days longer than a jack-o'-lantern because there's less area to dry out and rot um, but really when you start carving and taking the rind off a pumpkin the more rind you remove the faster it's going to decompose uh, jack-o'-lanterns leave the stem on cut the bottom off this stem nice and green and healthy will still feed the pumpkin so that'll give you a couple more days uh, soak them in water overnight uh, you can make them last longer uh, this one here it's a little too big for a five gallon bucket so I have a bigger container I can soak this in water but the coolest thing I show everybody is saran wrap and if you wrap your pumpkin completely top to bottom stem base blossom back front everything a couple layers of this around the outside of it you can put it in a refrigerator and two weeks later pull it out and it looks almost identical to the day it went in uh, worst come to worst it'll get a little bit white uh, versus the yellow and you can just take a scotch brite pad and clean that back up uh, if you have them sitting on your porch I have a water bottle you can spray water on it uh, I call it pumpkin juice it's 50% water 50% vinegar uh, I do that outside so it'll keep the bees away from it on warm days but sometimes the vinegar will make the pumpkin turn white faster as it's working against the yellow part of the rind uh, you can use a lemon juice a lemon juice will help preserve it but the lemon juice attracts bees and bugs really quick uh, like I said you can use a little splash of Clorox or you can get the Clorox cleanup uh, it just has a little bit of bleach in the water it's for kitchen cleanup uh, you can put that on your pumpkin and that'll make it last longer but if you're worried about the squirrels and chipmunks coming up and eating it uh, I have seen it where the chipmunks come up, they smell the Clorox on and they walk away. They don't have any interest in eating it. Uh, so it really doesn't affect them. But if you want to take it out to your garden later and throw it out there to decompose and you don't want that on it, uh, you can use the, the vinegar and that's not going to hurt anything at all. West Reading is always my funnest event. I have events all over the nation, but West Reading, uh, Mark and the guys there at the tavern, uh, let me do whatever I want, so it's always cool, it's always big. Uh, I'm not going to give it away what I'm working on this year. Uh, I will say Mark wants some other things added to it. Uh, maybe some fire, maybe some smoke, uh, different things like that. So, yeah, if you're in the West Reading area or Lancaster area and you can make it on the 14th, I start around noon and I work until... Uh, usually till I'm finished, but usually about 9 o'clock I call it quits and wrap it up so that uh, people can get their pictures taken and I'm out of the way and it kind of works out the best for everybody that way. But I'll be in Milton, Pennsylvania this coming Saturday from 9 to 3 at the Blue Sparrow Farm. Uh, after West Reading, I'll be in Shippensburg, Pennsylvania, uh, the 6th and 7th of October, I'll be in Holland, Michigan, if any of you are from the Holland, Michigan area, uh, there'll be eight of us, I believe, carving pumpkins down Main Street, and four of us working on a display that's going to weigh around 4,000, 5,000 pounds. So it's definitely something, if you can come to one of the events, it's definitely something that you won't be disappointed in. Uh, do I carve pumpkins that are cold or room temperature? Mine are all room temperature. Uh, when you bring a pumpkin in from the cold outside, say it's 40 degrees outside and it comes into a 70 degree room, uh, it tends to sweat. Uh, that doesn't really hurt anything. But as I'm working on details, that sweat just keeps coming out of it. And I, I, I try to avoid that as much as possible just so I don't make that much of a mess. So I bring a pumpkin in. If I'm going to carve this guy, like I brought it in last night and left it set in here so it acclimated to the 70 degree temperature that my room is. 
which my room is about 68 probably, but uh, that's good for me to carve. I'm sitting here in a pair of shorts, just chilling. If I take them out of the refrigerator, if I work, say I get home from work and I only get a few hours to work on them, I work on them till it's time for bed, wrap them in plastic, stick them in the fridge. The next day I pull them out, I work on them right away. I don't want them sitting there at room temperature all day while I'm not working on it to sit there and basically decompose. I'm making you want to carve a pumpkin? I hope I am. <laughs> Pumpkins, I never, ever, ever would have thought that pumpkins would lead me to the places it has and to meet the people I've seen. Uh, the, when I did Outrageous Pumpkins, I got to hang out with uh, Allison Hannigan and her husband. Uh, totally great people to hang out with. Uh, that was something I never, ever thought would happen. I was on Outrageous Pumpkins, the season that is currently playing right now, as a scenic artist. So the pumpkins that you see, host Demarius uh, holding up, or there's a preview, she's holding a skull in her hand and a spine coming off of it. That was one I had made for the show. Uh, I made a couple other ones I can't talk about yet because they haven't aired, but they Discovery Channel did partner up with a superhero, uh, so there is a superhero episode. It's not just a generic, hey... We're going to do, you know, comic book style. It's actually a specific person. Uh, so that's cool. I got to make a lot of pumpkins for that. Uh, I have background pictures that I post on my Instagram nah, every couple days as the show airs. So I can show you what it looks like behind the scenes with the cameras rolling. Uh, once again, you can only show so much because I have to protect the show. I can't uh, give you any clues or anything to who wins or any of that kind of stuff. But it was completely different from 2020 being a contestant. You can see how it's getting a lot smoother here than it is here. To really give it that subtle cleanliness to make it look like it belongs on the pumpkin. Uh, <laughs> that accent is undeniable. Yes, it is. I apologize to everyone that hears me this way. <laughs> But yeah, it's completely different uh, when there's no pressure on you, uh, there's no camera guy in your face, uh, there's no producer standing just off the camera asking you questions, trying to get you to engage with the other contestants. Uh, it's, it's completely different. Uh, you almost have to be there to, to fully understand. But when an artist, when most artists get to work in, they focus on what they're doing and they, they get quiet. That doesn't help a TV show. So there's a producer literally standing you know 10 feet away from you asking you questions like what are you doing here Danny what's going on there and to get you to talk so that you have an engaging television show for fans to watch and for me to go from being a fan to a contestant to a scenic artist uh, it was an amazing trip uh, it was a good time I got to meet some pumpkin carving friends that I've talked to online that I never actually got to talk to face to face uh, you get treated very well. Uh, Turn Card Content is the company that puts on Outrageous Pumpkins. Uh, unbelievable group of people. Uh, extremely nice. Always there for you. Want to make sure you're hydrated and you're fed. So somebody's constantly coming around asking if you need a water or something to keep you going. I was on Disney Plus last year as snow sculpting. Uh, pumpkins led me to get ex enough exposure that... I got invited to Denver to work on a snow sculpture with uh, four of my buddies that three of them are pumpkin carvers and uh, one of them is a chainsaw wood artist, which I also do in the summertime. Uh, so we had a blast. Uh, it's a, it was a 10 ton block of snow. But that was one of those things that uh, just because I carved pumpkins and people recognized me from television that I got to go do that was just really cool. Uh, a lot of sleepless nights, a lot of long days, a lot of interviews after the fact answering questions. I'm getting a lot of questions coming through. I'm trying to read some of them. Uh... 
no, I do everything freehand. Uh, I don't make a grid or anything for it. Uh, you can see I did a quick sketch just to show a basic layout and there's what I got. So you can see it, it transferred very nice. Uh, I just freehanded everything uh, for years before I did this. I custom painted, I did airbrushing, uh, that kind of you know pencil drawings. So I have a, an art background, never anything that I was you know went to school for, just picked up. Uh, but I made another pumpkin so you could see. So every once in a while I could bring that in while I was carving to show what it should look like versus uh, what it does look like now. Where were you on Halloween Wars? Uh, the Halloween Wars was on its own Food Network. Uh, I was on season four, which is streaming on Xfinity. I think it's on uh, Discovery, uh, HBO Max, I believe. Uh, I was on season four. We got eliminated. Sorry if I spoiled that for anybody, uh, but you know it happens. Uh, I was on a spinoff season that you really have to dig for. That's called Hayride of Horrors. It's Halloween Wars Hayride of Horrors, where it was shot outside. I made a eight foot tall scarecrow uh, out of pumpkin. Uh, it was cool. It, it was something I've always wanted to do. Uh, we ended up winning that episode. And in 2020, I was on Outrageous Pumpkins, where I carved the final piece I carved was Frankenstein doing the floss on a, I think it was a 1300 pound pumpkin. Uh, I made a pumpkin display that looked like uh, pumpkins were trick or treating, and one was pushing another one into a meat grinder, turning him into pumpkin pie. Broken Storm, you remember me? Nice. Uh, the only thing you can spray on a pumpkin, when I'm working on it, I spray uh, just, I call it pumpkin juice, just as a joke. It's my logo with, you know, this stuff. Uh, vinegar and water. Uh, if you have it outside in the sun, sometimes the vinegar will break it down. So sometimes that doesn't work, but that will keep bugs and bees and that kind of stuff away. Uh, you can spray a little bit of a Clorox bleach on it and it'll make it last a little bit longer. Uh, people don't like doing that because of, you know, squirrels and mice and chipmunks and everything that want to eat them or the deer that eat them after you throw them out in the yard. Uh, I can tell you firsthand that when you see a squirrel walk up to a pumpkin that's sprayed with Clorox, it does not eat it. Uh, it just walks away. But if you want to, you know, make sure that kids are safe touching them and everything like that, just a little vinegar and a little water. Uh, you can use lemon juice. The lemon juice helps preserve it. So if you're going to have it in your house inside, uh, a little lemon juice mixture with water will help it out. Uh, it does get a little sticky, but that will help it out. Uh, outside, that will attract more bugs and bees than you could ever imagine. And thanks for everybody that's, you know, hitting the like button and the follow buttons and sending me little gifts and coins and all that. I appreciate all that. Uh, hit that follow button so you can see, you know, everything else I do. Uh, I'll post where I'm at uh, once the carvings are done, I usually do just a quick video to show what happened to it and how it looks. Uh, so you'll get to see that. If you follow me on Instagram, there's a lot of still pictures that I'll show the process of how we got from one point to another. Uh, yes, this is a Brillo pad. That, that takes all the tooling marks off and makes it nice and smooth. And you can see this pumpkin was carved a week ago. Uh, you can see how smooth it is. You can't see any tooling marks on it. Uh, everything's nice and smooth and round. But I wrapped this in cellophane and put it in the fridge, and this is what it looks like a week later. Uh, for those of you that just tuned in, uh, these are clay ribbon tools from a company called Kemper. K-E-M-P-E-R. Uh, this is a smaller version of the same tool. I put little teeth marks on them. I cut these in with a Dremel tool and a disc. Uh, that gives me a little more control in the pumpkin, so I'm not, you know, digging into the pumpkin too awful fast. But you don't need that. For eight years, I didn't have that on there. But lastly, uh, just clean it up. Now I'll show you how to wrap this up real quick.
I'll spray it with a little bit of water just to make sure that area stays hydrated. Uh, this is also what you want to do if you carve a pumpkin like this to get a photo of it. The photos turn out best for some reason when it's wet. If you look at this one versus this one, you can see spraying it brings a lot of that color out. Now as this one absorbs it, it will turn more yellow again. But I give them a little bit of spray and then wrap them up. And I wrap it completely up. After you get that first one on there, I pull it tight to simulate that hard orange rind. I go up over top of the stem, kind of tuck it around the stem, around the bottom, underneath the blossom. Pull it tight. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to simulate that hard orange exterior of the pumpkin. That will keep all the moisture in. Uh, if you freeze the pumpkin, the pores in the pumpkin will actually expand and the pumpkin will turn to mush almost overnight when you take it outside and set it. Uh, if it stays frozen, yeah, it looks good while it's frozen, but as soon as it starts to thaw, all those pores expand and it falls apart then. So I have a refrigerator in the garage that is basically dedicated to drinks and snacks and pumpkins. Uh, this time of year, uh, I throw uh, four, five, six in their fridge almost every week. Uh, some of them will go to events, uh, I take some to schools once in a while, I uh, drop them off at businesses occasionally, uh, usually if I have extra, uh, but I, when I go to a show or an event, I take a pumpkin with me that's already carved, so this guy will go with me on Saturday to Milton, PA, just so if you show up at 9 o'clock in the morning, you can see something. Uh, I hate the idea of somebody traveling and bringing their family, and they get there and they don't get to see anything, so I always try to make sure they have a little something to watch as soon as they get there. The other thing I use a lot, and just because it's fast, this is a roll of plastic for packaging from Harbor Freight. It just allows me to go a little bit faster. A lot of times it's, you got to be quick and in a hurry and Go from one event to the next. Helps if I can cut it. Yeah, so both of them are wrapped up. ready to go to the event and like I said if you have a Halloween party and you don't have time to carve your pumpkin that week carve it a week or so ahead of time put it in the fridge and wrap it in cellophane that'll buy you at least a week or two uh, I tell everybody two weeks is usually pretty standard I also wrap the stem just to, to seal the pumpkin in I don't want any moisture bleeding out through here if I don't wrap the stem, like this area here, air will get in. So I just wrap the stem too to make sure that there's no air getting into this side here. Uh, it's the same way with the jack-o'-lantern. Uh, jack-o'-lanterns I wrap the whole way up. Uh, but like I tell everybody, if you cut the base off of it for a jack-o'-lantern, this stem will still feed nutrients to it. Uh, I'm going to try and do a, a video here showing you basically start to finish of a jack-o'-lantern. Uh, they're pretty quick. so. I'm going to try and do one of them someday this week or early next week. Uh, if you go to my page and hit that follow button, uh, I have a video pinned at the top that shows how to do the jack-o'-lantern, how to light it. Uh, it's basically focused on lighting the jack-o'-lantern. There's other videos on there that I made last year showing 
the basics of how to carve them and how to you know cut the angles in and if you make the smile too big you can't see the smile because there's no light shining out of the side to try to keep it this shape on side of on this side of the pumpkin uh, I just try to throw a lot of pointers actually like that just to you know help you make your pumpkin cooler than everybody else's uh, I've been doing this now for about 12 years so I know most of the tricks that you can do uh, I'm still learning as well uh, I'll run into some guys and you know at pumpkin events and they're like oh hey did you try this yet uh, so it's one of the things we like to share as much information as we can to try to, to grow the industry of what we're doing. But I never would have thought uh, that I would be doing this where I'm at and going to the shows I go to. But like I said, uh, hit that follow button and thank you for the comments. Uh, I'm sorry if I didn't get to your comment. I'm trying to read and work. Uh, thanks for the gifts, the coins, everything people sent me, uh, the badges, all that good stuff. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, that's it for tonight uh, tune in here one of these other nights and I'll do it again <laughs> thanks for being here and thanks for coming along